Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry I don't speak any Polish, so this will be entirely in English. Does everybody here understand English? <laughs> yes, okay, awesome. Okay. Um, how many of you here use MySQL? Okay, that's quite a lot of you. How many of you here have heard of or use MariaDB? Wow, a bunch, okay, heard of. Anybody using MariaDB? Okay, we have one, one person here. Awesome, we should talk later. <laughs> um, my, my aim is to hopefully um, tell you about what's cool with MariaDB and why you should use it so that you can all migrate your MySQL off to MariaDB. Thank you for having me here as well. I'm, I'm glad to be part of the ninth edition of this conference. I work at Monty Program AB, working on MariaDB. I also used to work at MySQL um, back in the old days. We got acquired by Sun, so I also st stuck around at Sun for a while. Then I'm sure you might already know that Sun then got acquired by Oracle, so I, I left Sun long before that. And um, in previous lives, I've also worked on the Fedora project. Does anybody here use Fedora Linux by any chance? Okay, so I was on the first Fesco. Um, and I also used to work in openoffice.org back when I was in um, university, actually, myself. And openoffice.org is now also dead, thanks to Oracle. I come from uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I also used to live in Melbourne, Australia. So if you have any questions about visiting Kuala Lumpur or visiting Melbourne or Australia in general, feel free to ask me. So, the MariaDB project has really been churning out releases, and we've only been alive for 26 months, and we've had four major releases in 26 months. So we must be working pretty hard to actually churn out new features. And I'll also talk to you a little bit more about the entire MySQL ecosystem and what is available today for you to use, because it's not only MySQL that's available any longer. The, the most important things you should remember about MariaDB is it is community developed. And when I say community developed, it, it means that not everybody works for one company and contributes to MariaDB. Anybody can contribute code to MariaDB, and I'll show you statistics as to what the percentages are. At MySQL, there was no such thing as community contributions. Everybody had to work for MySQL. We also have more features inside of MariaDB. We are MySQL, whatever you get in whatever, the latest release of MySQL, and more features. And I think that's pretty brilliant, is that we keep on pushing engineering forward. And we are completely backwards compatible with MySQL. What that means is today, you can upgrade to MariaDB and continue, your apps will continue working thinking it's talking to MySQL. You can use the same connectors that you're currently using. You don't have to change your language. You can just upgrade. How many of you here run Linux? <laughs> okay, so. If you run Linux, I'm sure you're quite well aware that there is package management inside of Linux. If you are using Fedora or, or, or RHEL, you can use YUM. If you're using uh, Debian or Ubuntu, you can use apt. If you're using OpenSUSE, there's um, some equivalent method, like OCS or something. I forget the command, zipper, yeah, zipper. So all you have to do today is do an upgrade to MariaDB. It'll uninstall your MySQL, it'll read the same data files and so forth. It's, it's that easy. So, who's behind it? MySQL, the database, has always been owned by MySQL AB, the company. When MySQL AB sold the Sun Microsystems for one billion US dollars, most people were wondering, what? MySQL is free. How could Sun pay one billion dollars for MySQL? It turns out that there were many people employed by MySQL AB, and when, at the time we sold, we were 400 people, actually. So 400 people um, were sold to Sun Microsystems as well as the MySQL brand and the, the product. It's important to note that Monty Program 
the company that I work at now, is just one sponsor of MariaDB. In actual fact, to be able to commit to the MariaDB code base, we are very democratic, just like, you know, say, FreeBSD or any other Linux project, in where you actually have to prove that you can commit to the tree before you get commit rights. And only 52% of the people that are called Maria captains, i.e. people that can push to, to, to the main branch of MariaDB, work at Monty program. 48% of the, of the contributors to, and Maria captains, people that can push, don't work at Monty program. They're all in the community, they work at different companies. Um, you can look at this list publicly on Launchpad, you will see that some are even working on, you know, very large social networks like Facebook and so forth. So it's, it's not just us that, you know, pushes code. This is truly a community project in that sense. And that's probably very important for you to think about when you are choosing an open source project. When you choose an open source project, you always want to make sure that there is an active, vibrant community around it. And MariaDB gives you that. And uh, I, I guess there's a talk after this about how you can make money with open source, or is, is that even a possibility? And if anybody tells you that you cannot make money with open source, that's probably not true because I have never made money with closed source software. I have spent my entire career working in open source software. And um, MySQL sold for $1 billion and it only had open source software. So open source is, you know, pretty good. Why did we start MariaDB? When Sun bought MySQL in January of 2008, we, were, we believed that Sun was a very good home for MySQL. Sun understood open source. Sun you know, was the proprietor of Java, Glassfish, they had OpenOffice.org, OpenSolaris. Everything about Sun was open. They even open sourced their Spark architecture so you could go out there and build Spark chips yourself if you wanted to. The sad part about Sun was it was bleeding money on a daily basis and it couldn't survive. It had, it had lots of good hardware, it had lots of good software and lots of good tech people at Sun, but in the end, you know, it just couldn't sustain itself selling servers. So that market had long, long sailed. So what happened was in April 2009, Oracle decided that they wanted to buy Sun Microsystems and eventually they did close this in uh, January of 2010. Largely because the European Union actually was wondering if they would, you know, stop, you know, MySQL from being developed or kill MySQL. So they had to make promises to ensure MySQL would stay alive for five years after the acquisition. Widinius, Michael Monty Widinius, affectionately known as Monty, wished he could be here, but unfortunately he had other business to attend to in the United States. Monty is the guy who created both MySQL and MariaDB. And one of his famous things that he does everywhere he goes is he brings black vodka and lets people drink black vodka. So while Monty couldn't be here, I have brought some black vodka, which you cannot consume in this university, <laughs> but you can possibly go to the clubhouse later and maybe drink or something. So this is a, is, is a Finnish tradition of his to bring black vodka. And I brought some candy so you can make your own black vodka. It's called Sami Akikosu. And... Um, so back to this story. In 2009, we decided, okay, it's time to make MariaDB a complete database solution. Rather than just working on one storage engine called, back then called Maria, now called Aria. Today, if you speak to anybody who works at Oracle, they will tell you MySQL is an open source product. In actual fact, even while I was at MySQL, it truly was generally an open source product. It wasn't a project. If you wanted to contribute code to MySQL, there was probably no way you could do it because you couldn't push to the tree, the trees were internal and so forth. MariaDB is a true open source project. Everything we do is out in the open. It's available in the public eye and nothing is done behind closed doors. We do all our discussions on public mailing lists. People translate the knowledge base in public. We don't hire translators and so forth. So, I'll reiterate our aims, which I already talked to you about earlier, is that we are 100% compatible drop-in to MySQL. We always aim for stable, bug-free releases, and the one important thing is we aim for high-performance, high-bandwidth environments in where you would put MariaDB inside. 
And the other most important thing is there is no enterprise or community edition of MariaDB. There's one version, and it's the GPL v2 edition of MariaDB. We truly believe in giving you an open source database, fully open source. Of course, you should probably note that if you use the NDB cluster storage engine, anybody here use NDB cluster? Nope, okay. There is no NDB cluster storage engine inside of MariaDB. We include the source, but we don't build it by default because MySQL also doesn't build NDB cluster storage engine by default. So we've, we have also followed suit. Everything else is the same. SQL dialect, the replication, you know, data files, all the same. In fact, a lot of people migrate to MariaDB by converting their slave to MariaDB and then eventually making that into a master and then converting the old master into MariaDB as well. It's a low, you know, low impact migration path. Of course, we include additional tools to maintain the additional storage engines that we ship. And we enable a more high performance InnoDB inside of MariaDB called ExtraDB. How many of you here use InnoDB? How many here use MyIZAB? How many here use something else? <laughs> what do you use? Wow. Memory. Okay, so. uh, Rob file system uh, sometimes, but just, okay. just for testing. Okay, I'm just for sure. testing, okay. Yeah. Any, anybody else put up their hand? No. Okay. Oh, and you'll also notice that after, usually at the end of every slide, I, I give you a link to, to the knowledge base. I'll talk more about the knowledge base, but the actual fact is we actually write extensive amounts of documentation about all our features, all our differences, all our similarities on the internet. And if I talk to you about that, I'd have to fill up you know, some 2,000 articles worth, and you know, you'd be here for several weeks, and not just one hour. So as I said, we started this sort of in April 2009, and it took us one year to make our first release. And our first release wasn't very hot. It's because we had to spend so much time building the correct infrastructure for people to contribute externally. We had to learn how to use BuildBot. We had to integrate BuildBot. We had to integrate virtual machines for testing. All our builds, our upgrades, et cetera, all tested, you know, and it's available for you to do. You can also create a new BuildBot instance. Let's say you want to support MariaDB on some odd platform like, I don't know, Spark32 or something. You can do that. We also added a lot of storage engines inside of um, MariaDB, naturally. And I included this little slide here about the Croatian collations. And uh, we didn't know for the longest time that the Croatian language didn't really work very well with MySQL. Then there was a patch to fix this, and we actually fixed it. Because we, we, we took the patch, we, we, you know, and obviously someone that speaks Croatian would know the collation table much better than we would. And uh, we, we implemented that patch. And we, we're much ahead of MySQL today if you write Croatian. Anybody here write Croatian? <laughs> okay, okay, um, MariaDB is much better. And following on from the Croatian collations, we also learned that if you wrote in India, if you wrote Tamil or Hindi, we also started corrupting data in certain edge cases in MySQL. We fixed that. Anybody here write Tamil or Hindi? <laughs> okay, Neither, n n nobody here, we know, knew it either, okay? That's why we didn't know the bug existed for so long. So I, I'm, I don't know if we have any problems with MySQL in the Polish language, but I presume we, we don't. I've never seen a bug open about the Polish language or, Croatia, or collation tables before, so I'm guessing we just work. We also decided to test MariaDB better, and we made tests for everything. We have something along the lines of 98 to 99% of code coverage testing inside of MariaDB now. So um, we, are, we are a much better tested version of MySQL, and testing is, will make it more robust naturally. And that's how we actually found one very important security bug, which is still not fixed inside of MySQL. We found this two weeks ago, and we fixed it. It was a, like a one-line fix, largely because we have an extensive test system. And some of you may be thinking, why are we celebrating things like the removal of mutexes or, or getting rid of compiler warnings. When you do GCC-warnings-all, 
we have no more compiler warnings, and why, why should we be happy about that? Largely because we're making a more robust solution. We don't, if, by not having compiler warnings, late, when the compiler changes with later versions, we're not going to introduce new errors. We, we fix the code to, you know, to strict C standards, and some storage engines to strict C++ standards. So this is why compile, but when you, generally, for, for you to compile and realize there's no compiler warnings, you're happy. But if you are a large, high bandwidth environment, this is important to your production day-to-day -day use. ExtraDB is the better version of InnoDB. It is developed by patches that came out of both Google and Facebook. It is designed to scale on today's hardware. It makes use of memory better. It can actually make use of multiple cores. When InnoDB was designed, you had one CPU, no, no cores, and you could access you know, up to three point something gigabytes of RAM. That was, that was back in the day. Today, most of the servers you use probably have at least two to four physical CPUs. Each CPU comes with probably four cores, and you have like, probably at the minimum 32 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, InnoDB by itself didn't know how to access all of this. ExtraDB does. The good news is ExtraDB, the changes inside of that, is also going up into Oracle's InnoDB. So at some stage, maybe we will not need ExtraDB, but today it's still required. We also included things like adding ex extra stats inside the slow query log and adding microsecond precision into show process list. And this little uh, screenshot up there will show you the microsecond precision inside of show process list. This is kind of important because today when you, do, when you run most queries, because if it's a short running query, you usually get, get an answer back in one second. You want to know exactly how long it takes, if, especially if you have many short running queries. And uh, we have full, built in full uh, microsecond support inside of MariaDB. We even have it as a data type. And uh, MySQL will get this in 5.6. How many of you here know much about anchor modeling? Okay, there's only one other database that has uh, implemented some sort of anchor modeling, and that is the SQL Server that comes from Microsoft. It allows you to occasionally query um, data and sometimes derive answers without touching every table uh, that it, the query refers to. And uh, usually this happens with highly normalized data. You get this as long as you have maybe third normal form and higher in your schema. And I'm sure nobody has six normal form schema unless you're a computer science professor. But uh, in practical use cases, third normal form is pretty normal. And uh, table elimination is, is just, it's free. It just comes, it comes there and it can, it can help you sometimes. Pool of threads, now known as the thread pool, allows you to use a limited set of threads when you have many short running queries. This is very, very important, largely because this feature, which is available in 2009 inside of Maria, sorry, 2010 inside of MariaDB, is now, now only available inside of MySQL Enterprise 5.5, which was just released a couple of months ago, and it's not available in the open source version. Oracle is closed sourcing some features. We are open sourcing them. So if you have a high bandwidth environment that needs to use a thread pool, and currently this is, we have in 5.1, it's lib event based. In 5.5, we change it to use native scheduling. You probably want to use, use this. So if you have something like you know, a machine with many cores, this is very handy as well. And this is not closed source by us. We, we have actually implemented a full open source version of whatever Oracle has closed source. We then made another release in November 2010 called MariaDB 5.2. This is still based on MySQL 5.1 code base. And the one important thing we included was pluggable authentication. We also gave this code back to Oracle so that they could implement pluggable authentication inside of MySQL. And Again, the reason why that's bold with the PAM authentication plugin is because Oracle announced that only for enterprise customers will you get PAM and Active Directory pluggable authentication. 
we said that's not good. So we made a PAM authentication plugin and open sourced it so you can use it today. One of the common uh, use cases for this, and I know a lot of Postgres users enjoy this because Postgres allows you to log in via PAM into Postgres. You can do the same thing now with MariaDB or use our plugin inside of MySQL and you know, still and skip the, the authentication process. You don't have to let MySQL or MariaDB authorize the user anymore. PAM will do it for you. We don't have an Active Directory plugin because we've not seen any interest around it. Anybody here use MySQL on Windows? OK, one person. <laughs> do you use Active Directory in production? Uh, Active Directory I don't use now. Okay. I used to use. All right, so we've not seen any commercial interest in it, so we, we figure we're not going to do it. But if you want to hack on it, it'll probably take you less than a week to write because that's how long it took us to write the PAM authentication plugin. It's really easy. You just need to know a bit of C and then follow the API documentation. We also included something called user statistics. And this is very handy when you have, again, uh, an environment where you don't control the app or you have many apps hitting the database. You can now do show client statistics. You can see how many cl clients are accessing your database. You can also do this for per, on a per user basis, per index basis, or per table basis. This also came out largely from Google and is now extended further at Facebook. And, this is, and we have this inside of MariaDB 5.2 as well. Very useful new feature, especially if you have many users on your database. So for the people that are still using MyISAM and not upgraded to MariaDB yet, I suggest you do that because MyISAM has got uh, thread contention occasionally. And because uh, as you know, MyISAM is not a transactional database. It, it's not a transactional engine. It does do locks. Um, we include segmented key caches and it can improve performance from anywhere between 40 to 250%. And again, this comes for free because we have a better implementation of MyISAM. How many of you here do full text search? Okay, so one person does full text search. So you don't even do full text search inside of MySQL then. For the ones of you that don't do full text search, I find that rather odd because generally most applications do use full text search. If you use even installed media wiki, for example, or if you install WordPress for your blog, all of that runs full text search. When, it, when, when you go to the search field, to mitigate this, they always use, because InnoDB doesn't do full text search, only MyISAM does. What they do is they always have summary tables inside of MyISAM. However, MyISAM full text search is not very fast. It has improved tremendously over time, but it's still much slower than something that is made to do full text search. Sphinx is probably one of the most popular full text search engines out there, followed by maybe Lucene. But Lucene will involve you also installing Java. Sphinx is small. It's written in C. It, it, runs, it runs in the Unix way, so you, it's just a daemon. And you can now, using MariaDB, query Sphinx either lo locally or remotely on a server. You can write select queries, and you can query Sphinx directly. There is no overhead for doing this. Sphinx will return the data to MariaDB and MariaDB will parse it. You can also join Sphinx SC search tables with other tables so you can save results or maybe if you want to cache results or, and so forth. And Sphinx also supports geolocation search as well. So you can also do locality search. And I understand that possibly many of you might go out there and become mob mobile app developers. And you know, mobile is all about location today. Sphinx searching for locations nearby would be very handy. Locations within the a kilometer radius of where I'm currently standing. How many of you have heard of NoSQL before? How many of you here use some form of NoSQL? Okay, what NoSQL do you use? It is not pure uh, no SQL. It's rather a cache, like uh, Memcached? Memcached. Yeah. Okay. What about you at the back? Memcache as well. What about you? 
You use NoSQL too, right? No, there's a guy behind you. <laughs> oh. Couch. <laughs> Is it CouchDB that you use? MongoDB. You use MongoDB. Okay, so you're the first person that uses well, one, no, no SQL solution. The mem memcache today is really a caching layer rather than a no SQL solution. And the good news for memcache users is inside of MariaDB and MySQL 5.6, you can use memcache to save your data into InnoDB. You can do put and get operations and make it persistent. Save a persistent layer to memcached. However, with 5.3, we include something called handler socket. Handler socket skips the SQL layer and goes directly to the storage engine. So you can do simple create, read, update, delete operations. Obviously, you no know, joins and stuff. That requires a SQL parser. In, on tables that are using, you know, InnoDB, for example. And the queries per second have improved tremendously from some 450,000 queries per second in benchmarks to 700,000 queries per second. Handle Socket was developed by a company called DNA, based in Japan. They make games. And um, it's a lot of Perl, but it allows you to improve your performance if all you're doing is using InnoDB for simple creates, reads, and so forth. We also include virtual columns, as well as dynamic columns. And we have both persistent and virtual types. And this is useful if you have different attributes to store per column, or you want to do things like business intelligence. And again, there are many business intelligence tools out there that are open source, like Pentaho, that make use of this. This is an exciting feature that we have. To make, to make your data durable, the D in ACID, every time you Make, you basically sync to the, bin, to the binary log when you're doing your application, you must also call fsync. And since all of you here use Linux, I'm sure you know that fsync is an expensive thing to call. fsync calls are expensive. You can do man 8 fsync and see how expensive it is. <laughs> um, but if you want to be durable, you have to sync the binary log. And you have to do this every time a transaction has, has committed. Now, if you have a large environment, this is terrible for you because it slows down replication tremendously. So we implemented group comment in the binary log because a very large social network asked us to do it. And if you can read the slides, you can probably see which is this very large social network that asked us to do it. Um, it turns out that they, were, they created two versions of group commit that were not nearly as consistent as our versions. And our version, which is the one in blue up there, is very consistent. And this is a benchmark that we ourselves did not do, but a very large social network decided to do. And you can check out the reference up there on the note as well. So um, group comment in the binary log is highly useful. Oracle's MySQL does not have this. They're planning to make another implementation of this algorithm. However, it is unclear when you will see this. So basically, if you have more than three parallel running queries, you will see the benefits of group commit, because what it does is it groups the fsync. The algorithm is, doesn't commit fsync every time it writes to the database. So this is very handy. Again, very useful for high bandwidth environments that need performance. If you run MySQL today, you always, always run rep with replication. It is, it's almost unheard of that you don't have one slave or many slaves or multiple masters and multiple slaves. Replication is a way of life. In fact, for the gentleman that uses Mo MongoDB, for example, the idea of the cap theorem is you have multiple da data stores everywhere. The only problem with something like MongoDB is that they have a global write lock. With MySQL, you usually shard your data, so there's no such thing as a global write lock. But you also have to maintain the replicas consistently. Start transaction with consistent snapshot now works with the binary log. So if you need to make a slave start faster, because when you implement a new slave and the master has lots of data, the data has to tra travel over the wire. 
And you probably already have a very busy network, and you don't want the data to travel over the wire. So now you can actually use start transaction with consistent snapshot, load up the MySQL dump data into your slave, so there's no on the wire transfers, and then just tell MySQL, the, the new slave what the bin log position is, and actually catch up with the master very quickly. We also implemented things like row-based replication for tables with no primary key. Now, if you have a table with no primary key, this is probably not a good thing. You probably want to have all your tables with at least one primary key. And if you're using InnoDB and you have no primary key, InnoDB assigns one for you by default. It is a six-byte integer that you can never change. So this is an InnoDB internal thing. So I suggest you always have tables with primary keys. Craigslist is a very large website. Is Craigslist popular in Poland? I don't know. Do you guys use Craigslist? Yeah? Does everybody know? It isn't popular. It isn't popular, OK. A lot of people know about it. But people know about it. OK, so everybody here knows what Craigslist is. Craigslist does classified ads. They destroyed the US newspaper industry because nobody paid for classified ads anymore. And they've been destroying this industry since the mid-90s. They have lots of data, 15 years worth of data, a lot of archive data. Now, the one thing that you don't do very well with MySQL or MariaDB is online alter table takes, takes a long time. You have to use external tools to do online alter. Now, Craigslist wanted to do all the tables because as they've matured and they've changed, they've, they're adding you know, more things into their schema. And they realized that all this historical data they didn't want to, want to look at anymore, but they saved it anyway. So that what, and uh, when they did an alter table on all the historical data, they found that it was just not completing. It just kept on going on and on and on. And they had some 15 years of historical data, which on one test machine took four months to alter. Four months. Now, I don't think you have the patience to wait four months. So we included progress reporting inside of when you do alter table or load data. So you know how long to wait now. You may go out and get a cup of coffee and come back, or you may leave this running for the weekend, whatever. We've now, we now let you know that it's going to take X amount of time. The PHP connector now understands progress reporting as well. So you can now see that in your PHP app. You can throw it back. So if you're doing things like uploading data or changing data, so is Flickr popular here? <laughs> Maybe. Anybody use Flickr? <laughs> OK, a bunch of you. So if you're like adding things to a set, for example, sometimes it takes a very long time. You don't know what's going on. Now with MariaDB, you can throw the data back to the user and say, you're, it'll take, you know, you can, actually, you can show an actual progress report, basically. We also updated the poll program called MyTop to you know, include progress reporting. So that's kind of handy. And when we released MariaDB 5.3, we made the most changes to the optimizer. This, these are the most changes to the optimizer that has had in maybe 10 years. And it has taken close to 17 man years to make the optimizer better. We have things like multi-range read. We have now got classic hash join, finally. We can do things like batch key access. But all, all of that is also cool until I can show you an application of this. I mean, yes, your application, any application today will run faster on MariaDB because we have all these optimizations, especially if you have large data sets. On smaller data sets, you probably won't notice a difference. But what you will notice as a difference is subqueries. If you use MySQL, you don't think about subqueries. You know subqueries don't work with MySQL. You always rewrite them as joins. Subqueries rarely materialize inside of MySQL, and if they're correlated, they will never materialize inside of MySQL. MySQL handles subqueries poorly. We know because we wrote it. MariaDB now actually will handle subqueries for you. And it may be hard to see these benchmarks, and, and we benchmark against you know, MariaDB 5.2, but for simple things inside of the DBT, three query set. DBT3 is an open source um, way to benchmark your database. Postgres people use this. We use this as well. And uh, some of the queries that use subqueries, 45 seconds with MySQL, 
0.43 seconds with MariaDB. Impossible with MySQL, three seconds with MariaDB. And you can test DB33 yourself as well. You can increase the data size you, by factor 10, factor 20, factor 30. Every time you increase the factor, the, the size of the database grows in gigabytes. So you can test this out on your own machines. But the, probably the most important thing now is today, if you're migrating your application from Oracle to MariaDB, your schema can still include all the subqueries that you had previously. You don't have to rewrite those subqueries into joins. Your migration path is now even simpler. So the only, pro the only probable thing that you have to rewrite is your PLSQL now. Subqueries materializing is a big deal. If you're an expert at MySQL, it is not a big deal because you never use subqueries. However, if you're not an expert at MySQL or you're learning databases today or you are migrating to MariaDB. Voila, we have subqueries, and it will materialize, and it will work for you. This is really useful. We also decided to draw you a little diagram to tell you what you may get inside of MySQL 5.6, which is currently not released, and what you can only get inside of MariaDB. And it turns out that most things you can only get inside of MariaDB. If you want a better optimizer today, MariaDB is your choice. Today is also Earth Day uh, around the world. And I think, I don't know if in Poland you have to pay for data center use and as well as uh, the electricity costs of your one U box. But uh, in Malaysia, for example, they're starting to charge you for electricity. So you want to be more efficient and you want your queries to run faster, or you want more capacity on one machine, MariaDB will give you that. The one thing that we never really did very well, even at MySQL, was know how many people use MySQL. If you download MySQL from mysql.com, we could count that. We would count maybe 70,000 downloads a day and say, oh, most of our downloads are from the Windows platform, so, if, so it must mean everybody using MySQL uses Windows. But that's not true, because most people, all, all the clever people here in the room, use MySQL via their Linux distribution or their FreeBSD distribution. They don't install MySQL from mysql.com. You use what your distribution provides. How many of you here use mysql.com binaries or nobody? So everybody here uses what your distribution provides. So we, we weren't sure how to count people that used it. So we said, look, we'll include this user feedback plugin. And if you, it's turned off by default. But if you want to turn it on, it'll show, hey, I'm coming from this country. I'm using this version of MariaDB. And um, you know, this is how long my server is up for. So if you're not running a production environment, like this is on your desktop or you're, you're playing around, you might consider enabling the user feedback plugin. And the other thing that's important about this user feedback plugin is it shows you how to write a plugin fairly easily. I already told you the PAM plugin took us one week to write. The user feedback plugin took a little more because we had to have a server-side component as well. Writing plugins to extend MySQL today is really, really easy because we have a, pl a pluggable interface and a full-bodied API that you can use that is well-documented so not only do you have to create storage engines, you can create really interesting apps around MySQL and MariaDB. Well, again, I'm not sure how many of you here use GIS functionality, but if you are going to develop, say, a location-based application, GIS is very important today. Um, MySQL only had very simple feature access, very limited set of uh, abilities for you to actually you do anything GIS related. So the most common thing for people to use is PostGIS. How many of you here use PostGIS? OK, only one. <laughs> OK, uh, two, OK. So if you, if you are using PostGIS today or MongoDB, you now have another choice. You have MariaDB 5.3 and greater, because we have now got full uh, geometric types. We have full support for OpenGIS specifications. 
And we are now going through the process of being approved by the OpenGI spec body to show that we comply with the OpenGI standards. Once we're done with that, we're going to take it further and include altitude support inside of MariaDB as well. So you will also have the, other, the add, added third dimension, which is not something that you get in other databases. We also include the ARIA storage engine. And it's probably worth noting that this is just a crash safe my ISAM at the moment. It also has got group commit included. So if you are doing multi-user inserts, this is actually much faster. But it's not fully transactional yet, because it doesn't do rollback. So if you are still if you are looking for another storage engine, ARIA is something you can consider to replace my ISAM. In fact, with MariaDB internally, all the temporary tables are now stored inside of ARIA. So that in the event that you have a very busy server and, and the server does crash, all the temporary tables still can be recovered. And there's no speed hit with ARIA versus MyISAM. So eventually, you want to phase out MyISAM. And if you've used MySQL for long, you know that MyISAM replaced ISAM. So we're changing the engine over time. So earlier, I mentioned that we have the new thread pool. This is kind of like the version that was modified for MariaDB 5.1. Again, it's good for short running queries. However, we saw Oracle taking it further. They allow you to pause long running queries as well. Not one to be let down. We decided to also implement the new thread pool inside of MariaDB 5.5 to allow you to pause long running queries. And we, we went one up. The Oracle version will minimize concurrent transactions, so if you have way too many transactions, it'll start pausing, it'll, it'll basically say, no, we, we don't want to accept anymore. And that's when you start seeing usual error messages like, you know, MySQL has gone away or MySQL is too busy. We, we don't do that. We start queuing. So we have a, a better implementation of the thread pool. And we also don't reinvent the wheel. We use, if you're on Windows, we use a native thread pool API. On Linux, we use ePoll as opposed to libevent. We also work in Solaris, BSD, and so forth, all using native pooling libraries. You can ch check this out inside of you know, MariaDB 5.5 uh, using maybe the MySQL Slap tool. MySQL Slap is a great benchmarking tool for MySQL and MariaDB. We also decided to improve things for DBAs. One is we have an, a non-blocking client library now, and this works against MySQL as well. So you can keep on sending queries and let the server handle it. You can keep on and, the, and it doesn't block. You can keep on sending queries and eventually the server sends it back to, to the client. Kind of useful if you have multiple servers and you're running things like show status and so forth. Also, sometimes we've seen that when you do select, you s people want to do things like limit at the end of it, or you want to just limit the rows that it examines. Currently, you can do limits but you can't limit the amount of rows. And sometimes there are way too many rows with very large data sets. Now you can terminate it with limit rows examined. MariaDB 5.5 went GA maybe about two weeks ago. It got quite a lot of press because of all the enterprise features that we included that isn't currently available inside of MySQL Community Edition. You can check out the release notes. In fact, Today, if you're using MySQL, there is actually a, a fairly big security hole which will be fixed in MySQL 5.5.24. You might want to consider upgrading quickly because, there, because different implementations of memcopy, it turns out that um, with, within 300 tries, less than 300 tries, you can break into the MySQL server because it, it sort of reads the first byte of the password. And it's most guaranteed that everybody has a root user. So. Consider upgrading today. We support MariaDB for five years from the date of release. Five whole years. That means we cover security, we cover features, etc. for five years. So far in the two, 26 months that we've existed, we have made four major releases. Naturally, we would encourage you to use the latest release, which is at the bottom, 5.5.23. But if you happen to want to use an old MySQL 5.1 based system, that's fine too. If you want to migrate from MySQL 5.0 to 5.1, you can upgrade to MariaDB 
5.1 or 5.2 or 5.3. We are supported for a very long time. It is very crucial that you note that. We don't charge you for this so-called support. Everybody gets it, because it's just a service that we provide. We are also very, very open. How many of you here know of the Launchpad tool that Canonical developed? OK. Do you use Launchpad? <laughs> OK, so if you have a Launchpad account, you can subscribe to our mailing lists very easily. We do everything in public. All our code is hosted on Launchpad. We don't push to an internal server and then, and then mirror it externally later. Oracle does this with MySQL. So the MySQL tree can sometimes be delayed by several days to even weeks sometimes. We don't have a closed bugs database. All our bugs are reported on Launchpad. This is important because while MySQL has bugs at mysql.com, a lot of the bugs that are being fixed inside of MySQL reference a closed bugs database that Oracle has that you have no access to. If you are shipping MySQL like in a Linux distribution, this is a very bad thing because you don't know what you're shipping to your people. MariaDB, everything is open. Oh, and we also like to use IRC a lot. You can just jump on hash Maria on Freenode IRC. There's a pretty good chance, 24 by 7, there's someone that's awake because we are such a distributed team. I, I work and live in Asia. Many people are in Europe, and we have people in America. So the chances of you not getting anybody, very slim. If you want to vote or, or add new features, or even fund new features, you can use the work log. This tool is exactly the same like MySQL's work log, except it's out, in the, out and open in the public. The documentation for MySQL is excellent. dev.mysql.com slash doc is amazing. The reason it's amazing is because there is a team of at least four people writing documentation, and this has always been the case at MySQL. It's very comprehensive. The only problem is it's copyright Oracle. It's not released under a free license. It never was. We have created the knowledge base, which you can now access. We are recreating lots of documentation. We have over 2,000 articles inside of the knowledge base now. And we also have a book called SQL 99 Complete, really, that if you ever wanted to read more about the SQL standard, you can read because we bought the rights and open source the book. The entire SQL standard applies to you know, any other database that you use, including Postgres and so forth. So if you want to learn about SQL 99, this is probably one of the best books. This knowledge base is dual license. It's Creative Commons by attribution, as well as GNU GFDL. So it can now be shipped inside of, say, Debian and so forth. Previously, if you used Debian and you typed man MySQL command, it it wouldn't work because it'll say that this documentation cannot be included because it's not free software. This is not a, this is not a problem anymore. Now if you do that in Debian, you actually see the man page. We have lots of happy users. Um, sadly, I'm not, I, I don't know any happy user in Poland yet, so maybe you will tell me of a happy user here soon. We have happy users like, like PAP.fr, Paybox services, they do financial transactions, so every time you're in France and you swipe your credit card, be it Visa, Master, or Amex, it will go through a Paybox system, and Paybox uses MariaDB internally now, and they handle something about 30% of all credit card transactions in France. OLX is, uh, was an addition to Friendster at one stage, it's now by itself. If you want to use the cloud, platform as a service, Jolastic is a Java platform as a service provider that uses MariaDB by default as well. We have lots of happy users. Web hosting companies love to use this because they can, they can actually make you more use of their single machines than they can with MySQL. People tell us that they are optimized tables for taking 24 minutes, and now it's just down to four minutes, which is saving them 20 minutes of time. And again, we fix bugs really quickly. You can hop on IRC, and we fix bugs you know, very, very, very quickly. We don't tell you to wait, or we don't tell you to pay us any money. We just do it. 
Getting MariaDB is pretty easy. You just go to MariaDB.org. You can also get it via the OpenSUSE build service, Arch Linux, Gentoo, FreeBSD, a whole bunch have MariaDB available for you. It's not inside of Debian and Ubuntu yet because they're waiting for 5.5 to GA. It'll be in probably in May. And then we have to work on Fedora, and Fedora basically, because they have a policy that says you cannot replace a core package of Fedora. You have to work alongside and not replace. Merging is taking us a lot of time. It took a, the first merge we did for 5.1 took us not even three hours. 5.5 merge took us something like six months. So we are starting the merge even for 5.6 now. Oracle doesn't take our code because they want to make a closed source product as well. So they try to re-implement the features in their own way. And benchmarks have shown that they're occasionally slower than us as well, which is a problem for people using MySQL. And we're looking into moving to Jira as well for the bugs and the work log. We want to have less tools and consolidate, just have Launchpad and Jira. Jira is free for open source projects to use, which is what we are, and we're planning to possibly do that. We have a book called the MariaDB Crash Course. Um, I know it's translated into several languages. I'm not sure if there's a Polish version. We got our book last year, uh, maybe 18 months into the project, sometime in September last year. And it turns out that for MySQL to get its first book, it took something like five years before we got our first book. So we seem, we seem to be getting more users, and we seem to be getting books also written about us, which is always a good thing. We don't do any support for MariaDB. For that, you can go to other providers. I, I'm from Money Program. We don't do any support, end user support. You can contact MariaDB service providers, which are listed there and on the website. You can also become a MariaDB service provider. Anybody can, really. We just do development, that's all. We're also uh, active on the social media. So if you are on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, please you know, add us. We keep you up to date. We also have a traditional mailing list as well. You can get that at mariadb.org. We're hiring people too. <laughs> as in Monty Program is hiring, not MariaDB, the project. If you program in C or Perl, or if you want to work on InnoDB internals, you can send me a resume. I'll be happy to look at it. And we hire all around the world. And I think we have about five minutes for Q&A. So does anybody have any questions? <laughs> You said that uh, all the bugs are public and you are able by anyone. What about, uh, for example, critical security bugs? Right. So for critical security bugs, we tell distributions have access to a mailing list called packages at mariadb.org. Critical security bugs are obviously not made public. Uh, they are only given to Linux distributors and FreeBSD distributors so that they can patch stuff immediately. Anything, that, and that's by default with Launchpad as well. Launchpad, if you market security, it is not public. So, we, and obviously we will not release information about a security bug until we can get the distributors to fix it. And if it affects MySQL, we also tell Oracle and say, look, you gotta fix MySQL. We told Oracle, for example, two weeks ago about this bug that I'm, I'm telling you about now and they're not fixing it yet. We're not sure why. They, they said that they'll fix it in 5.5.24, but it hasn't happened yet. But two weeks for uh, uh, an exploit that can give you access to root, and you know, looking for a password in, say, you know, 300 times. Today you can do that in less than one second. And that seems ridiculous. So we released our fix long before Oracle, and we're not sure when Oracle will release the fix either. We, we cannot control their roadmap. But we did tell all the package, package distributors to upgrade um, you know, either MySQL or MariaDB. And we included the actual fix and the patch, which is really only a one-liner that we fixed recently in the last two weeks. So we don't publish security bugs, mainly because we know that this could be very bad. 
But if you are a distributor, you will get access to a separate packages mailing list that is private. And uh, I think this is how most open source projects work. They do not broadcast security information until things are fixed. It's just being responsible. If we broadcasted it two weeks ago, you know, millions of MySQL servers would you know, be rooted now. <laughs> so we're waiting for your distributions to update, and many distributions are updating. FreeBSD, for example, just within the last 36 hours, upgraded to a, a better version of MariaDB. Plus, they also use the patch into, into MySQL. So, yeah, we, we, we're responsible when it comes to security. We, we don't believe in zero-day full disclosure kind of thing. We do tell Oracle, and we make sure that they fix it first. But if it takes, like, two weeks, then, you know, we, we think we shouldn't wait any longer. We try to wait, like, a week, to be fair to them. Oh, you have another question. Yeah. Uh, well, then another question is that uh, if you fix uh, such a bug, uh, do you push the commit uh, for general availability to everyone so they so that they can see your one line fix <laughs> and reverse en engineer it? Well, if you are, if you watch our launchpad trees closely, you will have seen the one line fix. Yes, everything gets pushed in the open. <laughs> So if you watch the, if you watch the tree, yes, you would see you would see it. All right, thanks. <laughs> because we don't have a, we don't have any private trees. We our build system only works from the public launchpad. So yes, you would see it. But we don't say it's fixing security bug. The message is a bit obscured. So you have to actually read the code, not only the message. Because we're as I said, we're waiting for Oracle to fix it. But we had to make our release after one week. We can't wait any longer. Next week would be the third week that this bug is open. And we are sincerely hoping that Oracle makes a release soon. <laughs> so if you're running, yes, this, this chap has a question. <laughs> uh, I, my question is, uh, do you have uh, consider a version for a mobile platform? Because uh, on the mobile platform, uh, we have, uh, such as Android, uh, we have uh, SQLite, yep. uh, and uh, we may install a mobile version of DB2. Uh, but uh, DB2 is uh, the property uh, settings, uh, and uh, the, the SQLite uh, is, uh, the SQLite uh, have uh, some limitations. Yes. Uh, so, it's not uh, full database engine uh, for multiply uh, applications. Uh, okay, uh, SQLite uh, have uh, limitations uh, such as uh, one user per uh, database, yep. but uh, how many users uh, may use uh, one uh, tablet or, or one uh, phone? Uh, in Android, uh, Every applications, uh, every application is run uh, as a d different user. Yeah. Yep. So when I uh, from uh, many applications uh, try to, to, to connect to uh, one uh, database, no, Concurrency I have uh, I, I have a problem. So yep. uh, do you do you consider uh, to to give us uh, a, a version for 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 mobile platform? Very good question. When we first started MariaDB, we said that we will never do two things. One is we will never make an embeddable version of MariaDB, and one is we will never ever touch GIS. Clearly, after two years, we touched GIS. <laughs> and uh, with MySQL and MariaDB 5.5, there is actually an embedded version available. It's called MySQL-embedded or MariaDB-embedded. Now, the thing about mobile is, yes, SQLite has got concurrency issues, but SQLite is also about 180 kilobytes in size when you embed. <laughs> MySQL's embedded, or even MariaDB embedded, because we're not stripping out all the features, like, you know, start procedures and stuff, is still pretty large. It's, I think uh, the latest size we have is about 2.2 or 2.3 megs. It's not small. <laughs> it's not in the kilobyte range. Now, do we know of people embedding MariaDB or MySQL inside of platforms? Yes. P 
people have always embedded it on desktop applications. For example, Adobe, if you use their Photoshop, their digital asset management tool, fully running MySQL embedded at the back. Do we know on mobile if people are doing this today? I mean, in, in the old days, in the mid-90s, Motorola was embedding MySQL in, in, in DB directly. We don't know anybody embedding MariaDB today because it's kind of large. <laughs> it's not small. That's not to say that if we put some work into it, like stripping out features like stored procedures and triggers and stuff, we may actually be able to reduce the size of the binary tremendously. But we've just not seen enough um, requests to make this happen. SQLite still seems to be the strong point in the embedded space. CouchDB did try to sort of get into that space as well. And CouchDB does a wonderful job of offline online sync. Um, but that didn't work out so well for them with the whole HTML5 spec. SQLite made it, CouchDB didn't. And the company has now you know, sort of forked CouchDB to make their own commercial version. Are we going to do anything about it? It's hard to say. We go where the user says we should go. And if you think that it's important that we have an embedded version, we can actually work towards something along those lines. In fact, we could even, PBXT is another storage engine which we include that is BSD licensed. And that, that is awesome because then you don't even have to get a, an exemption to use it, a GPL exemption to use it in your embedded application. So we, we can definitely make things like this work, but we've just not seen like, enough user requests for it. Like the GIS functionality, there was this company that said, hey, we really want this. You know, we don't want to be using MySQL and Postgres as well. We just want to use one MySQL. We, you know, if you, we'll, we'll do it for you, no problem. But if we see enough people say, hey, we want it to be embedded as well, we could definitely make it happen. I mean, like I said, we didn't want to touch two things, and we've already touched one of the two. And with the embedded product now, we've sort of touched two of the two. It's just that it's not small enough. It's not as small as SQLite. SQLite really wins on smallness. But I know it has problems with concurrency. And that's where, uh, I guess, Apache Derby was trying to also come in and, and, and play. Java DB from Sun, Apache Derby. But I, I guess that project is also not going very far now that Oracle owns Java DB. Or they might have killed it, and it's just Apache Derby. So, yeah, if you think it's a, if you think it's important, file a feature request, and I'm sure we could, you know, look at it. If enough people say we want an embeddable version, we'll make it happen naturally. You can also make it happen by looking at the embedded code and saying, hmm, let me strip out stored procedures, views, triggers, partitioning. How you don't partition on a mobile device? You strip all that out. <laughs> Submit a patch, and you might be a committer as well. So it's up to you. You can either submit a patch or say, hey, we like the feature and get enough people to vote on it. But at the moment, we haven't seen enough people saying, hey, we really want to embed this. SQLite seems to work for most people. And you know how to reach us, Launchpad. <laughs> Any more questions? Oh, you have a question. <laughs> You, you mentioned GIS. Can you can you make a few comments about uh, why why uh, that you didn't want to get into it and finally you did? Okay, well we didn't want to get into it because we were traditionally weak at it, and PostGIS was doing such a wonderful job. <laughs> PostGIS really just works. We got into it because, <laughs> haha, purely for commercial reasons. One company in Latin America said they'll pay us a huge amount of money to make GIS functionality happen in MariaDB. They paid us, we wrote it. <laughs> so there's no, no, no real reason as to why we changed our minds besides the fact that someone gave us money and said, hey, make it happen. But, but what did you do for GIS? What is the extension? Right, so we, we gave spatial, complete spatial data types. So we had to extend both MyISM and ARIA to give you spatial data types. And then we also had to implement all the geometry algorithms inside of um, MariaDB. And the extensions took us maybe about six, six man months to do. No, sorry, six months, but maybe about 12 man months to do. And um, now we support, we have you've even got a fairly good demo. We support exactly everything you can do with PostGIS. We've even loaded the OpenStreetMaps data into um, MariaDB, and it works. 
In fact, for the longest time, OpenStreetMaps has been storing everything in PostGIS, but they do a lot of the analytics inside of MySQL. They dump the data and then do analytics inside of MySQL. We're sincerely hoping that at some stage they don't need to do this any longer. They can just use MariaDB. There's no need to dump the data. You can just use one, one solution. You don't need to have two databases running. Uh, we don't have a large user like OpenGIS or anything. Um, sorry, uh, OpenStreetMaps, sorry, that's, that's, the, that's the one. We don't have a large user like OpenStreetMaps, but um, we believe in Latin America, whatever mapping service that exists out there clearly is using MariaDB now because, well, they paid for the feature. <laughs> that's, that's the only reason why we touched it. Yes, you have a question. Since the MariaDB is way faster than other databases, maybe we should use it in the data warehouses. What do you think about that? Right. So MySQL has never been very strong inside the data warehouse. Uh, MyISM and ARIA would probably be your best engines for data warehousing use. For data warehousing use, column stores also make a lot of sense. And there is a column store available for MyISM and Maria, for, for MySQL and MariaDB. It's called Infobrite. Uh, they have a it's not entirely open source. <laughs> it's why I don't talk about it. <laughs> it's crippleware. It's like they have a community edition that works and then an enterprise edition that you have to pay for that really works. And um, yeah, we don't have any column store engines yet inside of stock MariaDB, but Infobrite and even uh, TalkUDB, which uses fractal trees, are probably very good for column stores. In fact, TalkUTech, the company that makes TalkUDB, Ship has most of their customers running MariaDB because we have extend we have all the extensions that they they want. We do we can do online better online operations, and we extend the Create Table API. So if you go to TokuTech's website, TokuDB, and check out TokuDB, a lot of their reference customers are running MariaDB, and the TokuDB. TokuDB again is not open source, <laughs> so uh, for data warehousing use cases. We don't have any good open source storage engine because the storage engines that we have are all row based. You need a, col a column store basically, and uh, most of the most of, most of what's available today is closed source or or, or semi cripple. <laughs> TalkyDB actually has a full full version available for you to actually use, but I think it's limited by time trials or something, so you have to eventually pay them. But yes, that one actually was, if you Google MariaDB and TalkyDB together, you'll see a lot of use cases between both. By default, TalkyTech tries to push people using MariaDB and TalkyDB. But are we good for data warehousing? I mean, my ISM is very good with, you know, its insert speed is amazing. And uh, it really just is an interface to the file system. But if you want to do other things like, you know, look at uh, like, like star schemas and stuff, no, we, we, we don't do that very well. That's where the third party tools come in. But if someone was to write an open source column store, for example, we would definitely include it. We include anything that's open source. <laughs> not, not, not commercial or crippleware. <laughs> but there are options. Infobrite is one, as, as is TalkUDB. Both uh, have MariaDB on the top. They also offer MySQL naturally, but it's up to you which you choose to use. Thank you. Um, any other questions? I think we've you know, gone some 10 minutes past time, actually. <laughs> Is the next speaker here? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>